Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at CSS. Let's get started. So modern web pages are known for three languages, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Now at the basic level, HTML defines the content of the page, JavaScript defines the behavior of the page, and CSS or cascading style sheets defines the appearance of the page. Now, as we've seen, uh, browsers have default ways of displaying various HTML elements, such as headers and paragraphs. CSS allows us more control over those elements, allowing us to override the default appearance of an element, such as size, color, and typeface. Now, because uh, uh, this is we're talking uh, primarily about JavaScript in this series, uh, we won't look at uh, CSS too in depth, but you guys need to know the basics of what CSS is and how to make uh, dynamic web pages. So additionally, uh, some of the DOM API methods that we'll be relying on, uh, the, they rely on the CSS selector syntax. And again, so we'll need to discuss that here in just a little bit. So first, let's go on and create up a new file and let's call this index.html all right and let's go on and create up a new folder here and we'll call this 003 uh files all right we'll create up inside 003 and this is going to be um HTML5, and we're going to get rid of some of the excess. For now, we'll even get rid of this just so that it's bare bones. And with the title here, we'll call this um, Hello Class. We will create up a, um, a script. Whoops. script src here, and we will have a script.js. And we will also create up a, a link for CSS. And here, um, we will also need to create up a JavaScript file. A file, and let's do new file. And we will want uh, style.css. And we want another new file. And we will call this script.js. All right, good. So now everything that we need is inside of the file. So first off, link elements. OK, so a link element here is uh, we're creating up a CSS file on our page. All right, and so that's our style.css right here. It's going to be blank for now. And <clears throat> we're in order to include that CSS file and the JavaScript file, we need to link them to our index.html. So the script for the JavaScript, as we saw in the last video, uses the script tag with the src to locate the script.js. Now the next is the link. OK, and the link element is a generic way to include an external source onto a page. Now, to create a link to the CSS file, uh, we're, uh, we need to actually open up our document. We need to put in the link just as we have here. And this uh, piece of CSS here, um, let's go on and actually uh, do we want to set up a rule right now? Uh, no, let's talk about this again. Again, it starts out with the link. OK, and then it has so we are providing the string in here. This relation here is a style sheet, OK, which means the linked file should be interpreted as a style sheet for the page with information on how the elements should appear. OK, and then the href or the hyperlink reference is actually for the actual file itself. And again, there's no need for a closing tag, OK, in the link. So let's actually go on and set some rules. So let's go on to our CSS file, our style CSS. And this is going to, uh, a CSS file consists of one or more rule sets establishing how elements in a document should be styled. So we'll write up some basic rule sets now and we will create this up and we can actually, 
Um, uh, let, let's just see here. Let's let's create up an an H1 tag here, and we want the color uh, to be red. Okay. We want the font style here to be italic. Okay. And um, let's see, actually, we probably need to put in a little bit of context in here. So we have our body. Uh, let's go and do H1 in here is hello. Uh, let's do uh, JavaScript is cool. And let's put in a paragraph tag in here are reasons why JavaScript is cool. Okay, and so let's go back to our CSS. Now, a CSS rule set has two parts, okay? It has the selector, in this case, it has the H1, and it has a series of declarations which are between the braces. Okay, so here that one of the declarations is color. The next declaration here is font style, and we're putting it as italic. Now our rule set has uh, <clears throat> uh, has these two declarations. Now each declaration again is going to consist of a property name, okay, which is this. This is this color, a colon, and then the property value. So um, and again, this is going to be followed by a semicolon. Now, uh, this again, this is the same thing here. Okay, for style, and then we have italic. Now, we also have uh, selectors, okay? So, well, actually, I guess, I guess we can run this just so that, uh, so that we can see it. So, and if I... Open this up. We see that what's happening here. Our JavaScript is cook. Okay. Well, because again, I misspelled cool. So, but is uh, it is red and it is italicized. So we can go back over here. I can fix my horrible spelling. Okay, and we can change this maybe to green. Okay. Now, another thing that you can see here is that you can actually change the colorations of these uh, items. This is this is within um, uh, within uh, Visual Studio Code, and you'll see what happens here is that it actually changes this up to RGB, and then it'll actually automatically change the colors for you. This is kind of nice if you're you're not exactly sure what coloration you want. So maybe you wanted something a little bit more blue. Make it a light blue. Or maybe you wanted it more green, but you want it a lighter green. Okay, and then we can go back over, over here and refresh. And notice now this changed that text to uh, uh, JavaScript is cool. It changed it to green. Now, the next thing that we can do <clears throat> is we can create up selectors. Now, selectors help target elements in an HTML file. Uh, but CSS also lets us create specific selectors. So to take advantage of them, first we need to add in some more HTML code. So let's see here. Um, let's have a heading and we will say something like this. Let's change this to what we had before. ID is equal to uh, main header. And we'll have some things like JavaScript is here. We're going to say strong. Strong makes things bold. Cool. And I'll move you out of the way. Then we will have a paragraph here. And we'll have this class is equal to highlight. This needs to be in quotes. Okay. And then let's 
add um, another one. Let's do something like H1. We'll put in another heading here. Here's another heading. And let's go on and create up another class here. And this is my second paragraph. And we're going to change this one to, again, class equals highlight. And let's go on and put in one more P class in here. And let's say, uh, let's change this to third paragraph. Third paragraph, uh, Java uh, data science for everyone is the best. Please like and subscribe. Okay, and let's actually take this and let's turn this to strong. All right, so we have a couple a couple things going on in here that we're, we can maybe highlight, okay? So we're gonna grab highlighting, we have strong, okay? And we have a part of this that doesn't have anything in here. So how do we go about actually changing things, uh, utilizing these? Well, so first off, I'll go back over and I've, I've added these things in here. So let's take a look at it without any CSS really in it. Okay, so notice here, this is, this is bold. Um, here is another heading. Let's see, what else did we do in here? Let's maybe put in some more. Uh, let's change, let's check JavaScript. Put JavaScript in bold here. Cool should be bold. All right. Good, so let's go on and change up the CSS styles, okay? So we had our H1 was going to be red and italic. Now, actually, let me let me kind of just show you this, okay? So we put our HTML, if I, if I comment this out really quickly, and I go back over here and I refresh, notice JavaScript is cool, all right? So nothing has really changed in this. This is an H1 tag, we have JavaScript, is cool here. This is all bold. This is here. Now, if we want to change, this is automatically going to be changed by our tag here. All right. So that will be will be this green. And again, maybe maybe just for ease, I'll just put green. Uh, styling is italic. All right, so now let's go on and change up the main heading. Oh, and not heading, it's main header. And if you notice it has a squiggly line here, it's telling me that that doesn't exist. So if I change this to main header in here, it should not change. Uh, main dash header. Okay, I wanna make sure that I use that one main dash header. All right, it's good. All right. Now, oh, uh, what we're going to do is we want to actually add in some class, though we're taking into account some of those class attributes, and they haven't really made a difference yet, as we can see um, in our file, right, in, in our visual here. What we want to do is let's go on and change this to maybe something like font size of... Well, you can you can see here we can do small, large, uh, extra, extra small, etc. But we can also put it in as pixels. So let's do fifty pixels in size. Okay. So strong. We want this to change to uh, color blue. Now, if we want something that's inside of a p tag and it's strong. Okay, we want to change the font size here to be something like um, 25 pixels. Okay, and then our highlight dot 
dot highlight here, we will change our our background color to let's do aqua. And if it is a highlight and it is strong, we'll do the background color is going to be um, let's do yellow. Okay, so what's going on here? This CSS code uses a, a couple different types of selectors. Okay, now the first one is this uh, main header here. Okay, and it is an ID selector. So an ID selector picks out the HTML element with the specific ID attribute. Okay, and uh, the hash mark is going to be followed by the ID you want to match. So in this case, main header matches the element with the ID main header over here, ID main header. Okay. So then uh, the next thing that's going to be happening in here is uh, we're, we're going to the rule set with strong, the strong selector here, okay, is just going to grab any type that is strong uh, element, and then again, it's going to set it to a blue text. Now the P strong element, so the selector is a bit more interesting. It's a descendant selector. So which only matches a specific specified element if it's a descendant of some other specific element. Okay. So then finally we have a uh, highlight. Okay. This dot highlight here, which is a class selector. Uh, this kind of selector matches all elements with a given class attribute. Now, the class uh, name uh, is after the period. So here it is dot highlight, which will match any element with the class is equal to highlight. So class is equal to highlight for both of these instances here. <clears throat> now, we, uh, we also have this uh, dot highlight strong. Okay, which combines a class selector with a descendant selector, and it matches any strong element that's a descendant of an element with the highlight class. So let's go on and actually take a look and see what this looks like. If I, oops, this is the wrong web page. Let's close this. Let's go on and open it. back up. There we go. So notice this looks completely awful, does it not? But at least uh, we can see here what types of uh, things are going on, right? We can see that we have, well, one thing, we're not going to win any designer awards, but it does help us see various aspects of CSS selectors at work. Uh, so again, I would uh, like you guys to kind of play around with this to get, kind of get a handle on, um, well, how to just change things and select things and edit things as you go along. Now, as I mentioned uh, previously, some DOM API methods rely on CSS selector syntax. So if we right click and we hit the inspector tool here, Go to console and let's say we do document dot query all right here and we want the selector all and let's say we want dot highlight okay well notice here this gives us a node list of two items and here you can see as I hover over them. If I hover here, nothing happens, but if I hover over this 01, it tells me where it's located on the screen. Same thing here. Okay, so it returns a node list with two elements. Now the node list is a kind of specialized array. Now for the purposes of uh, this uh, course, all right, we're gonna treat this like a regular array. Now, if you click on the arrow, you're going to actually see 
a lot uh we're going to expand that node list and you're going to see here a lot of elements okay so we can uh, we can actually look over these and see what all types of potential attributes that this item could have and again you see a lot of them are null and again you can scroll almost forever but you notice here you can see the outer html the outer text Okay, you can see the type offset. You can see a lot of information in here that you can later on, if you want to grab it, you have the inner text and the inner HTML, um, et cetera. <clears throat> now, let's say that you wanted to actually grab up the strong elements. So we'll say let strong elements is equal to our document dot query selector all here and let's say that we want to specifically grab the main header strong element okay so if we do strong elements notice we get a node list for strong but it's only a single item because there's only one item in there and then you can actually grab out all of that information that you've seen before. So <clears throat> one thing that you can do, so let's say that you want to access something maybe inside of this. Okay, so, and notice here that this is zero, right? So it's located zero, so you can do strong elements zero, gives us strong. And let's say we want the text content. Notice we can actually go and drill down and grab that exact text content in there. So the same thing uh, could be said if we had saved this and we wanted to go into the second highlight and grab other information as well. So what we've seen over the last couple of videos is we've talked about HTML and CSS and we've defined how content uh, and appearance of a web page respectively changes with them. Now, HTML and CSS are both topics that courses, whole courses have been made about them in the future. And I expect you guys, I'll give you guys some links and everything that you want to go look around and do some more on your own with that. But this is all we kind of need to start playing with JavaScript. Now, this we also uh, talked about the DOM and utilizing the web browser's internal um, model of a web page and we've also been able to manipulate the dom with uh, the dom with javascript using the dom api and gotten our first look at how you can utilize javascript to create interactive web pages so later on in future videos we'll start talking about event based programming using buttons clicks and scrolls if you want more of that content and you like what you see here please comment subscribe and hit the like button and i will see you guys next time bye bye